Today on 10 Minute IT Jams, we have Chris Fisher, who is the Head of Security Engineering at Vectra AI. Uh, so this is Chris's second IT Jam with us. And uh, for those who haven't seen the first Vectra AI IT Jam, um, it is a cybersecurity company specializing in network detection and response solutions for cloud, SaaS, data center, and enterprise infrastructures. So welcome back to the Jam, Chris. Thanks for having me again, Nick. Really appreciate it. All right, thanks for coming on. Um, so we're going to be talking a lot about the organizational impact of security breaches within Microsoft Office 365 today, um, which have become more common this year, obviously. Um, and so a recent report came from Forrest that showed uh, the cost of account takeovers to be around uh, 6.5 US billion, uh, billion US dollars in annual losses. So first of all, could you explain why this type of cyber attack is on the rise and what's different about it this time around? Yeah, certainly. And I think obviously, as we're all aware of the pandemic and, and the fact that everyone has gone to work from home, um, a lot of organizations very quickly pivoted to cloud. And, and I've, I think I've said this before, but I keep hearing this from customers as we go and talk to them, but they've done things like digital transformation projects that should have taken 24 months have been compressed literally into six months to be able to deliver services and keep their businesses running. And as we're aware, when we look at that type of pace with technology, it's it's all about keeping the business moving and sometimes security is a secondary thought. Um, but on top of that, we haven't necessarily had a good time to prepare for these attacks as they're, they're, or the change, I guess, in the way we need to secure businesses. Um, they just haven't had that opportunity to get the baseline that they ordinarily would as you take those slow steps and understand where this sits. So from an attacker's perspective, they've just seen this big, attack surface appear in front of them. And when you think of something like Office 365, the value of data that sits in there for, for the attackers is, is enormous. So just that alone is really what's driven the, the change that we've seen and the change in the behavior from the attackers because they're driving to go do this. And like all things, you know, people are distracted at the moment. We're getting lots of news feed coming into us around the challenges of the pandemic. We're working from home. Uh, just, just very briefly before we started this, my wife had fired a blender off behind us. And this is a type of thing that we're dealing with as we work through our day to day. So there's a level of distraction that, that we might not have as users that we haven't, we haven't had previously as users. And I think this is where the challenge is coming into it. This is where attackers are being very successful in that. Mm, yeah. And why is there a growth in the use of Microsoft Office 365 as a backdoor um, to steal data from organizations on the part of um, cyber attackers? Yeah, look, I think when you see, again, going back to, to what the, the, I guess the information that sits in there from an attacker's perspective is being, it's just a level of access they hasn't, haven't necessarily had before to that level of information. But we're seeing attackers do things in a very different way and they've changed their behavior when it comes to Office 365. So we've all heard about account takeovers and we all understand that, that a user identity can be compromised and that gives an attacker access into a particular user's account. But the way that they're starting to leverage that is the thing that's really changed. And this is, this is really where, um, you know, we're, we're seeing a massive shift in the way that an attacker will do reconnaissance and data exfil um, inside Office 365. And they're using the tools that, that Microsoft provide them. Um, as, as you're probably aware, and for anyone who's listening to this, who's ever dealt with large volumes of emails, things like email rules are incredibly helpful to sort out what you need to do with the mail to make our lives a little more productive. Well, there was one thing that we had in the, the Outlook client um, that, that we used to use back when I was working in, in security teams, that if anyone left their laptop unlocked, we used to use a rule that would actually execute Explorer and funnily enough, take them to a, a Rickroll page just for a bit of fun. But you send an email in, you've created the rule, it, it launches Explorer and takes them to a web page. Now that as a joke is good fun, but when an attacker does this, and this is what we've seen recently, they've created things like exchange rules that when the client syncs after they've done that account takeover, they've been able to execute, take the, the user to a website using Explorer, get them to download a payload, shut down that, that Explorer session very, very quickly, and then use another rule to execute the payload. So the attack has now gone from that initial account takeover to creating a, a way to do user execution without the user having to interact in any way, shape or form. They just simply send an email. And then that's created a command and control channel. So that attack has now been able to pivot from Office 365 to the user's machine, which now means they can get on that corporate VPN, they can start pivoting into different services in, in those environments. 
And that is just something that we've seen as a very simple exercise that we've seen attackers do, but it's incredibly effective at how they're able to deliver that. Now, obviously people's machines are now working from home. So if they're not going through a VPN or their internet access is not being filtered, those, those links aren't necessarily being seen as malicious. Some of the payloads that are coming down are not necessarily being caught with the technology that we would traditionally have if the user was sitting on premise. When you couple that with also what we've seen with Power Automate, we've seen Power Automate being used very heavily. And, and for people that don't know what Power Automate is, think of it as like the, the PowerShell for Office 365. It's designed to build rules across all the productivity tools to make our lives simpler and easier. And a good example of this is some of the flows that you can create where you take all of those attachments that come in for your email and you go and store them into like a OneDrive or a Dropbox. We've seen attackers leverage these tools to do the same thing. So every email attachment that comes in when they've done that account takeover, they're just literally just piping it straight out to, to a, one of their own Dropboxes. And the challenge you have with this is you don't get a lot of visibility. It's either on or off. So it means that, that our tooling at this stage doesn't have that visibility to, to pick up what the attackers are doing and what their behavior is. And when I look at tooling that, that's helping with Office 365, a lot of that focuses on your end user. So it's looking at, has the user shared a document? Has the user's behavior changed ever so slightly? Um, you know, what's the user doing in interacting with certain DLP informations and things like that? Now, that is important, but we're not focusing on the attacker behavior. And it's those things like the exchange rules, what they can do with Power Automate and how they're able to deliver their attacks very successfully and, and do that in stealth, that I think is really where we need to pivot and start understanding what that looks like. Right, yeah. Um, so yeah, we've gone through what's, what's on the rise, what's happening now. So what are the solutions? What steps do organizations need to be taking to protect these employees from attack, regardless of device? Yeah, I come back to looking at that. Um, it's a mind shift, a mindset shift that we need to look at. We really need to focus in on the attacker behaviors. How are attackers using um, the, this, this surface that they have in front of them with Office 365? How are they leveraging that? And how can they use that for their advantage in a way that, that is very stealthy? Uh, a lot of what we do focuses in on that user behavior. We're, we're trying to understand, is there a change in our own users organization or in the organization of our users? You know, is something different? Are they logged in from a different place? You know, the, the typical things that we'd look at, but we need to focus this again, looking at that, what is an attacker doing? Take that mind shift stance, look at that, understand what that is, because that effectively helps you identify things like account takeover. You can then start to see how they're doing the account takeover. Is it coming in through malicious Azure applications? Have they managed just to fish a user? Um, have they managed to be able to bypass multi-factor authentication that a lot of organizations have turned on? So it helps you identify where the gaps are. But then on top of that, you then see things like exchange rule creation. We look at what Power Automate's doing, whether that be happens to be Power Automate for Teams or just generally Power Automate across Office 365. And we can start to really define what the attack surface is and then start closing those gaps incredibly quickly. Or we can monitor them for what they are and really identify very early in the stage of an attack before the attackers had any chance to do any damage. And I really think that mind shift change to move towards attacker behavior is critically important in the thinking for organizations. Awesome, really cool. Um, well, that concludes uh, today's Tim and IG Jam with um, Victor Head of Security Engineering, Chris Fisher. Chris is second IT jam with us. So thank you so much for joining me again today, Chris. Thank you very much, Nick. Appreciate it.